So I've been spending a lot more time lately using perplexity spaces. And honestly, I have to admit, I might like these more than Claude projects, maybe even custom GPTs in some use cases. So guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build a perplexity space for your personal AI research assistant or whatever other tasks that you want to accomplish. So be sure to, be sure to stick around to the very end. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you wanna know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I'm using for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this below this video. But now let's dive back into perplexity spaces. So if you've never heard of Spaces, this was a big update launched about a month ago by Perplexity. You can think of it as a tailored knowledge hub. So if you're familiar with custom GPTs or Claude projects, the interface and really usability is extremely similar. You have a description, you have custom instructions you can set, you have files you can upload, whether it's PDFs, TXT files, uh, Word doc files, things of that nature. And then here it has all the threads that I was doing before this video, just to test some things out before I hit the record button. Now, one thing to note is that, again, if you are a free user of Perplexity, you can create spaces. You don't need to be a member of Pro in order to do this. However, if you are a Perplexity Pro member, you do get access. You can upload files and use them as sources in your searches. So that's one benefit. And you can also toggle between the different AI models. Whereas if you're using the free plan of Perplexity, you don't have the ability to toggle between the different AI models like I'm doing here. I think it just sets you on default or sonar. Yeah, I think just default at what sets you out on the free plan. Um, but that's not really a big deal. So again, if you're on the free plan of perplexity, you can start to create perplexity spaces. And now I'm going to show you how to do this. So all you need to do is go to perplexity.ai. You do have to create a free account in order to start using perplexity. So you wanna do that first if you've never used this. And then once you have an account, click spaces on the left menu, and you should see an option that says create a space. You should also see some examples down here just to help you get started if you don't really know what to do. So I'm gonna click create a space. And in this example, what I'm going to do, and this is probably applicable to many of you watching, is I'm gonna create my own AI research assistant. So I'm gonna do, let's just do AI research assistant. Now you can add an emoji here if you wanna do that. I'll just do the, the little salute emoji, you can do whatever. And this is where it gets good. So I actually recommend using ChatGPT or Claude to kind of complement this process. So for example, what I did is I pulled up ChatGPT gave it a little description of, hey, I'm creating a perplexity space. Help me provide a description. Help me provide custom instructions. Here's what I want to do. Just help me, I guess, help me put this out in a more detailed response versus just me shotgun typing it, right? And so here it gave me a description. So the Ryan Dozer AI Research Assistant. So what you can do is use ChatGPT. You can use Claude too to help you generate a description and also custom instructions. So I'm going to come back to my description, paste it in, control V, and so here it's gonna say, welcome to the Ryan Dozer AI Research Assistant. I'm just gonna get rid of my name. Let's do AI Research Assistant, a cutting edge research tool designed to enhance your productivity, marketing, and AI. This space will be your personal research. So, I mean, this is good, right? You can obviously do whatever you want, fine tune it, but I'm gonna leave that for now. For AI model, this is where it gets good too. Again, you have to be a member of Perplexity Pro in order to filter this. Uh, you can leave it on default. So if you're on the free plan, you have to leave it on default. You can do Sonar, which is Perplexity's uh, iterated version of Llama 3. Uh, let's see, you can do Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Grok 2 is now available. I'm actually just going to leave this on default for this example. But if you're a pro user, feel free to toggle this as I'm curious to on the difference of results that you'll get. So this is very important, adding the custom instructions. So if I go back to ChatGPT, you'll see here it gave me custom instructions. I actually didn't like how it formatted this. So what I did is I said, format the custom instructions in paragraphs and bullets. And so here are all the custom instructions. So I'm gonna come down here, copy and paste, go back to my perplexity space, paste it in here. Now you'll notice it said optional, but there's really no purpose. I mean, this is why you want to use perplexity space is to add these custom instructions. And so this is what I have right here. So accessibility, additional features. Uh, let's see here. So I mean, again, read through this before you just start using it. I read through it before I just copy and pasted it in here to make sure it looked good. But you can obviously leverage ChatGPT and Claude to help you with this. So I'm going to click continue. And here is my new space. So I'm going to click this. 
This is my space here. So on the top right, notice how it's private. You can share it if you want or keep it secret. Uh, there's links, you can add contributors. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And so here are the instructions. So let's say you forgot something in the custom instructions or your description, or you wanna rename this, simply click edit next to instructions. And this is what we just did, obviously. You can fine tune this, tweak it however you want. And so now this is our little text box here where we can start performing tasks. But before we do that, you wanna upload files. Again, that's the purpose of using a perplexity space versus just going to the homepage of perplexity and prompting it. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to upload several files. Now the big thing here to note is that you can add, I believe, up to 50 files on Perplexity, 25 megabits per file. Um, and what's really revolutionary about this is this is more than what you get in a Claud project. So this is a Claud project. I have a separate tutorial I can leave below this video about Claud projects, but here you'll see I've already hit 61% of my knowledge capacity and I haven't even uploaded really that much in my opinion. So you do get a lot more storage with files on a Perplexity space. And that is a really big deal in my opinion. So I'm gonna click add file. So again, here's that 50 documents, 25 megabits each. And I only have a few files I'm gonna add in this example. So for example, I have a LinkedIn profile. So I want it to know who I am and kind of scrape my LinkedIn profile as a PDF. I have a bio, so a Ryan Dozer bio, just kind of who I am, what I do, my accomplishments, etc. So I'm gonna upload these two. Let's enter there. And so those are uploading. And I also have other files I wanna to upload too. So for my marketing agency, I have a brand guideline. I have a brand SOP. I have a keyword research SOP. I also have a market research SOP. So I'm gonna upload those as well. So any SOPs, if you're working at a company or standard operating procedure, if you've never heard of that, you wanna upload this to the knowledge base so that way the perplexity space can understand what you're trying to accomplish. So here are all my documents here. And so it looks like they successfully uploaded. Again, you can add more files if you want. I just did these five as a quick example. And so here we go, the files are now uploaded. So now let's actually talk about the good stuff and do a real world example. And what I'm going to do in this example is keyword research. I do a lot of keyword research for my marketing agency when I'm writing SEO optimized blog posts, whether I'm trying to figure out YouTube video ideas for my YouTube channel. I do keyword research all the time and I do leverage perplexity for the most part to help me with this. So what I'm going to do is notice how my files are here, my instructions, everything's dialed in now. So what I'm going to do is I first wanna make sure that pro is turned on. There's no point in even using this without the pro search in my opinion. I also wanna make sure web is turned on and I also wanna make sure my space files are turned on. Now this might be not be relevant to you, but for me, I have a market research and keyword research SOP. So there are certain guidelines that I want this to follow in the SOP that I've outlined for keyword research. That's the reason why I've checked the space files. And now what I actually did as well is I used ChatGPT to help me come up with an advanced keyword research prompt. And I'm gonna paste that in right here. And yeah, I'm gonna leave this prompt in the description below so you guys can copy and paste it for your own use. But here is the prompt. Use the primary, using the primary keyword, and I'm gonna insert my keyword. So in this example, I'm going to do, uh, let's do best AI tools for marketing. So I run an AI website, AI YouTube channel, very relevant keyword for what I'm doing. Provide a comprehensive keyword analysis, include the details. So I want monthly search volume, cost per click, keyword difficulty, search intent, and I also want content ideas. So I told it to generate three to five content ideas that align with my keyword. And again, I'm gonna click enter. And so now I'm going to skip ahead after this output is complete. All right, so here's the response that I got from my perplexity space. And so right here, it gives a high level analysis, right? It gives the MSV or monthly search volume, cost per click, keyword difficulty. It talks about the search intent, informational with commercial undertones. It's very important to understand search intent when you're doing anything related to SEO content creation. And here's some content ideas. Top 10 AI marketing tools that will revolutionize your strategy, choosing the right tools, comparing the best tools for content creation, boosting your ROI, real world case studies, the future of marketing, emerging AI tools you need to know about. And again, you can keep following it up, ask follow-ups. You can say, generate me five more content ideas, actually do this, do that. You can keep fine tuning it to get your desired output. 
related keywords with long tail variations. And then it actually gives the keyword data for some of these content ideas that it created here. So you can ask related, what are the top tools? I like this generated image, search videos, search images. There's so much that you can do with a perplexity space for a use case like this. And then from here, you can even use Claude or ChatGPT to write content for these things. So, I mean, you could come in here and copy and paste these content ideas and say, hey, write an SEO optimized blog post using this title, using this primary keyword, here's the data, and then set some parameters and you can leverage other AI tools like ChatGPT and Claude to actually write the content for you. As I wouldn't recommend using perplexity to write the content. Now let's do one more example. Again, this is gonna be relevant if you guys work in marketing or content creation as well. So I recently acquired a client who's in the dental IT industry. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know anything about this industry. So what I can do is leverage something like a perplexity space to help me understand this industry more on a high level, identify uh, key competitors, key content ideas. I help me identify what the target audience is, give me ideas on content to write. Basically a high level market research overview of a particular industry. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the following prompt. And again, I'll leave this prompt in the description below this video as well so you guys can quickly access it. So here it says conduct an in-depth market analysis for insert industry. This is where you would input your industry. I'm going to say for the dental IT industry. Provide the following details, top competitors, target audience, top keywords, content opportunities, industry trends, marketing insights, uh, deliverable actual, and then you can tweak this however you want. I think this is just a really good high level market research overview. Now in this one, I'm actually gonna turn off space files. It's not really relevant here to what I'm asking in this example. Make sure pro search is turned on, and then I'm going to click go. And then I'm gonna skip ahead after this output is complete. All right, so here's the output that I got from my perplexity space. So first off, it gave me the top competitors in the dental IT industry. And for each competitor, what I like, I didn't even specify this, it says strengths, weaknesses, USP or unique selling proposition, market share, right? So that's cool. It gives me the top three. I could follow up and ask for two more if I wanted to do that. Target audience, demographics, dental practice owners and managers, income level, education, uh, tech savvy professionals, behavioral patterns, key pain points. That's a very important thing to know. Uh, top keywords, dental IT support. And obviously you could do a lot of long tail variations of that. Dental IT support in XYZ city if you want to build local service pages. Uh, HIPAA compliant dental software, dental practice management, dental cybersecurity solutions, cloud-based records, uh, content opportunities, blog, video, infographic, white paper, case study. So it's given me a lot of things to think about here. And then some industry trends, increased adoption of cloud-based solutions, growing emphasis on cybersecurity due to rising threats in healthcare. That's very true. Uh, mobile friendly, rising demand on teledentistry. Uh, so then it gives me some high level marketing insights, offer free trials, partner with dental associations and influencers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys get where I'm going here. So this gave me a really good high level overview on the industry of dental IT. And obviously you guys would replace this for whatever your specific industry is. You can ask for the top competitors, the target audience, content ideas. And then from there, you can take these content ideas plug it into Claude or ChatGPT and help you actually write or create content based on these content ideas and opportunities. Just getting the wheel spin in here for you guys watching this. But those are a few quick real world examples that you guys can use to build a perplexity space. There are obviously more use cases that you guys can do and make sure you're leveraging something like ChatGPT to help you as you're trying to do something inside a perplexity space. I found I had a lot more success doing it that way than just trying to think of things as I'm prompting the space. Um, but I really hope this video helped you out and that you can now be able to build a perplexity space step by step. So I appreciate you all who have made it this far. If you found value in this tutorial, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I wanna hear what you guys have to think about perplexity spaces in the comments below. Do you think these are better than Claude projects, custom GPTs? That's probably a good future video idea the more I'm thinking about it. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.